sing this up. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind away? It was my turn till I.
Okay. Oh, there I am. Okay. <laughs> well, good morning and welcome, church. This is indeed a beautiful Sabbath um, that we're celebrating today, and we're so glad that each one of you is here. We want to remember uh, at the Benberg uh, Seventh day Adventist Church our mission and our vision. So, will you please repeat those with me? Our mission is to love like Jesus. Our vision is to seek Jesus, serve Jesus, share Jesus, make disciples, and do life together. Amen. Uh, if you've never done it before, usually we say if this is your first, second, or third time, but really, if you've never done it before, would you please get out your cell phone and text Hey Ben Brook to 77411. You'll be receiving a text once a week that tells you what's going on at church that Sabbath. It's, you're not bombarded with messages, but it's a way to stay uh, up on what's happening and to also alert you when you may want to invite somebody to come because you can see maybe they'll be interested in something we're doing that day. Uh, also, when you came in, you should have been given a little half sheet of paper. Uh, Lisa's holding one up back there, Life at Benbrook. If you didn't get one, please raise your hand and get one. We have a lot of activities going on and coming up in the month ahead. And they're all listed in there and described, telling you what's happening, where it is, when it is, uh, who to contact if you have more information. So please, and then we also post the Life at Benbrook on the WhatsApp chat. There's a Life at Benbrook chat on WhatsApp. So if you didn't get one or you know someone who needs one, they can see it on WhatsApp as well. Well, today is Super Sabbath. Yes. And this is a truly super, super Sabbath because we're going to have uh, a couple of baptisms, uh, a new member welcome by profession of faith. We love it when we get to officially add to our family those people who have already become family to us. So we're doing that today and our lunch theme today, you know, in honor of March and spring is going green. So you're going to see a lot of green food back there. Enjoy it. And then after lunch, uh, you can stay to help make sandwiches for the group of volunteers that's going to the jail tomorrow. They're going to, the, uh, well, we'll have a, a slide about that. Also, it doesn't say it on here, but those of you who work with children or want to work with children must do a volunteer certification. It's required by the Texas Conference. So if you have not done that yet, please, Dane and Chandra are here with their computers today. They're willing during lunch sometime. They'll help you get that all done and all out of the way. Also, uh, Ben Brook is also requiring all deacons, not deacon assistants, but deacons and elders. So if you have not completed it, you fall in one of those categories, Please look for Dana and Chandra after the worship service and let's get this taken care of so that we are up to standard of what we're supposed to be in um, people who are around our kids. Tomorrow is the uh, jail ministry and we have a group of, I believe it's nine volunteers, 12, 12 volunteers going to the Johnson County Women's Jail to put on a worship service to praise and worship God and pray with them tomorrow. I think we're going to just invite those who are going to the jail tomorrow to come forward right now and have uh, a prayer of blessing upon people that are Amen. going to serve, sing, share their their talents, connect with some of these women. I think we're expecting a hundred. Is it going to be outside? I know they did it outside, possibly. The weather is nice. Weather permitting? Okay, that's so exciting. And I'm going to ask Susan to have a prayer of a blessing upon them, those who are going tomorrow, okay? Let's gather together. Elders, if you guys want to come forward and gather around as well as we pray. Father God, what a blessing 
to be able to serve you by serving these women who are in the Johnson County Jail. What a blessing to have volunteers who want to go to share their time, their talents, their gifts, and lifting you up and bringing them to these women who need you so much. Lord, we pray your blessing upon them, upon the words they speak, the songs they sing, the prayers they pray, the interactions they have. Lord, may lives be saved and lives be changed as a result of this ministry and what you do tomorrow. Please bless each person, give them a safe trip to the jail, keep everybody healthy and strong and able to participate. Thank you so much for opening this door for us and for our church through these beautiful people to be a part of this ministry. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This Wednesday night, we have our women's book club and our men's group meeting right here at 7 o'clock. And they are both studying the book, Steps to Christ. They're in different places. They meet separately. But please come and, and join. There's always great conversation and great fellowship. Then on the next night, Thursday, the Daniel and Revelation uh, Prophecies Bible Study class is meeting at the Old South Pancake House at 6.30. And from what I understand, they have a great group of people going. And not only is this a huge benefit to the people that are taking the class, but they are a tremendous witness and testimony to the people in the restaurant. And as I understand, they even had a server who heard them praying and came to them and asked for prayer. So this is a beautiful opportunity to uh, reach out in the community. And you're still welcome to join. Talk to uh, Debbie if you want more information about it. The solar eclipse is coming. Unfortunately, I heard a news report that said it's possible it may be very overcast that day, but we're going to pray that it's not. And if you would like to go and uh, view the solar eclipse, it's on Monday the 8th, and we have uh, three places that are hosting viewing parties, Lake Whitney Ranch and Burton Adventist Academy. And both of those places, you need to go online and register. That information is in Life at Benbrook. Thompson Observatory at Southwestern is also having a day long of activities. You don't have to register and they have free parking and lots of stuff going on. More details on that in Life at Benbrook. We have a reading today. <laughs> When this came up, you know, the church board has to vote to approve um, transfers in and out. And at the church board meeting this week, when Frank and Judy Rausch's name came up and we needed to uh, grant or, or vote to bring to you their names, to grant their request to transfer to Granbury. And everybody said, no. <laughs> so this week we're just reading it and recognizing that they're making the request. And next week we vote, and Frank and Judy would appreciate it if we all vote yes. <laughs> One thing that we don't have a slide for that I wanted to be sure to mention, and it is in the Life at Benbrook flyer, is that two weeks from today, we will not be meeting here at BASIS. Uh, there, the school is having an event that day, and so we are going to have church in the park again. And all the details are in the Life at Benbrook flyer. We'll be getting them out up on the WhatsApp chat and get the word out to you. But we're going to start at 1130 on Sabbath, the 13th of April, with our uh, having our classes then. And everything's going to be a little abbreviated. We'll have our classes, then we'll have a picnic lunch, then we'll have a short worship service. And then we're going to be going out around the park uh, interacting with people at the, heart, at the park, handing out uh, literature, talking to them, praying with them. So be preparing for that. No church in this building on April 13th. Now it's time for us to welcome the presence of the Holy Spirit. This is a time where we individually and as a church speak to the Holy Spirit about how important it is for us 
for his presence, his power, his voice during our worship service. So would you please take a few moments and just individually, wherever you are, pray for the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life and in our service today. presence among us. We are so glad that you are here today. We ask you to fill this building. Fill the hearts, the minds, the lives of all the people here. Lord, three, please speak through every person who participates in the worship service today. Lord, please bring us your peace, your comfort, your wisdom, your understanding. Lord, thank you so much for being the cornerstone of, of our worship today at Ben Brooks Seventh-day Adventist Church. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, we've welcomed the Holy Spirit, and now it's time to welcome each other. So if you would please just get up, walk around, and say hello to somebody. Give them a hug. And when you finish that, just go ahead and make your way outside for the baptism, okay? So we're going to be welcoming each other and then heading outside for baptism.
make our way outside for the baptism. So you guys can just exit this exit door right there um, so that we can see them get baptized as soon as possible, guys. Jacob, you guys go head out there. Let's not get locked out.
until other people found out, and I was like, okay, y'all are now in the circle of trust. <laughs> and uh, so, uh, why don't we, since we just had this big surprise, why don't we move forward with Jane and Bert, and then we'll do it with Andy, okay? So yeah, so Jaden and I have been uh, doing Bible studies uh, with a few people on some uh, video calls on Sabbath afternoons, <laughs> and just so that uh, you guys wouldn't wouldn't know, this was parents. She told me she came to me. She said I wanted to be a surprise for them, and so I want to go through the preparation. And this was a long time ago. This has been like. Yeah, beginning of December. So this has been months in the making, and we've just kept it a secret this whole time. But Jaden's been growing in her in her walk with God. Um, her relationship with Jesus is is so strong, and she's learning and soaking in um, not only her closeness with Him just in a relationship, but also just her willingness to surrender and submit to His truth, Amen. and just to to let His Word speak into her life. Amen. to change and transform her. And it's just an amazing and beautiful thing to have a front row seat to that. And so Kef, I know, has been part of those studies, and others have been part of those studies, and, and we just had a blast going through this journey of just digging in to God's Word and growing and, and learning together. And now, and I, I, I said I was like, I'm just going to cry, I'm just going to cry. He's so overjoyed. So I know this is a moment you've been praying for this time, I know, forever. And, uh, and, and, and here we are, and I just praise God that I get to be some small part of it. I'm so overjoyed that God is allowing me to be a part of it and, and to be a part of this, uh, this special moment for your family. So we'll just have you sit down real quick. And I've got a cut on my foot, so I'm trying to keep it out of the water. <laughs> so that's why I'm at the edge here. But, but Jaden, I just I praise God. Here we are. I praise God. The devil tried to stop this from happening. Uh, with with my foot, and with uh, Jada not feeling her best, and just all kinds of crazy stuff. Uh, but Jesus wins today. Yeah. This, this is the day of victory. This is the day of victory. And nothing and no one is going to stop that. It's happening right now. And we're celebrating here. We're excited about it. That's great. That's wonderful that we're excited here. But I want you to know something. Make no mistake about it. Heaven right now is going absolutely crazy for this moment. God the Father celebrating with a big hug. I can't even imagine in my mind what's going on in heaven right now as a result of Jaden making this decision today for Jesus. So Jaden, because it's your desire to follow Jesus with your whole entire heart, to give everything you've got to him, not saying that you're going to be perfect, but saying that you're going to be committed, that you're dedicated, that you're surrendered to him in a loving relationship from this day forward forever. For the rest of your life, no matter what happens, because of that, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
and, and, and she'll say something and he's like, oh, okay, okay. I'm like, you weren't ready for a fight, weren't you? But also just to see them growing to, to kind of just go through it together. And she did all 28 books and it was like, she just kept going and kept going and kept going. She asked questions and he asked questions <laughs> and, and it was just beautiful to watch. Uh, but not just seeing her going through the studies, but seeing her going through this whole transformation so far. So um, she's been doing a whole lot. It's been it's been life transforming, and I think that it's a God thing. And I'm just I'm just grateful. You worked really hard, and I know that God is not going to let you. to know him and I told her it's gonna be a rough road but God says do not despair for I have overcome the world Amen. So Amen. she she's doing so good and I'm proud of that so Amen. it's amazing and I only see those fights but anyway like I said, <laughs> the journey still continues because learning and nurturing, just like for everybody here, we have to make sure that Jaden and McKaylee grow in faith. Amen. So we Amen. do that, and uh, we've seen them through to the point where they can start also teaching other people and bringing other people. Amen. Yeah. This is just the beginning. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. So I remember the first day that McKaylee was in church. Um, I happened to be filling in for Miss Debbie that day in Young Disciples. <laughs> and she came to Young Disciples. I remember just kind of starting to get to know you a little bit and some of your other friends here, even though you kind of graduated and moved on to <laughs> bigger things now. Um, what a blessing you have been to our church family. Yes. You have brought so much joy. And I really do see the joy of Jesus. Amen. 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 So, Jacob is also going to be a part of this baptism, and uh, so if you want to sit down here, just kind of kneel down or whatever. It is now our privilege together. Um, because of what Jesus has asked us to do in, uh, as a symbol of what's happening in our lives, it is our privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank <laughs> you. 
He's floating around here somewhere. Crazy. Oh, he's somewhere there. activities and part of it goes for our Adventist Education Scholarship Fund. So please be generous and you can't turn down those little faces. Especially when they just stand there and look at you until you put money in their net. Felt 
God's feathers. Mm -hmm. I have felt God's feathers. So I'm going to tell you the story. What you see right here is a map of the country of Poland. It's a country in the middle of Europe, uh, about the size of Texas. And, and Texas is big, right? So yeah. it's a pretty big country. And I lived there for about 10 months when I was a young girl, about 21. And I lived in the north of Poland, along the Baltic Sea, in a city called Gdansk. And I might not be saying that right, but it's up there. So I lived there about five months, and I would just take a uh, Bible, take little books like Steps to Christ, like what we're studying here, and I'd go um, into town, and I would say, Hi, I'm from Texas. Jesus loves you. And I would give them a book. I learned how to say that in Polish. I don't remember anymore. And in that country, you weren't supposed to talk about religion in public. Oh. But I got away with it because I sounded like I was two years old. When I, when I said, hello, I'm from Texas, and Jesus loves you. And they just couldn't get over how cute that was. And so they would take the book. So anyway, then it was time for me to get to work for another ministry that still exists in Poland today called Drudwa or Springs of Life. And it was in a little bitty town outside of Warsaw. In Poland, they call Warsaw Warszawy. And I was going to get there by train. And it was a four, a little over four hour drive, or train ride, and I was going to go into Warsaw. Now, Warsaw is a big city, and the train stops in many places. And I had made this trip a few times, but this time I was moving. And I had a, I had a, I had a backpack almost as big as me, and it was full of stuff, because do you know what? There was a day when there was no such thing as an iPad, a Kindle, or a tablet. And so if you liked to read, you had to carry heavy books. And so that was what was in my big backpack that was almost as big as me, because I was moving. So, here's the trouble. Warsaw is a confusing place, especially if you cannot read the language. And, especially if you think north is in front of you, south is behind you, and you get your rights and lefts mixed up for east and west. So, I asked my friend, John Kayombi, and I did you something. He had about 12 other names after his first name. Uh, he was from Zambia, and he was a student there in the university, and he spoke Polish. I said, will you help me buy my ticket? Because here's the deal. I need the, the stop in Warsaw that is right across a parking lot where there's a bus stop that's going to take me out of Warsaw to this little bitty place called Mishchonov. I didn't really sneak, right? but that was where I was going. And I only had enough money for my, um, my bus ticket and a little, little loaf of brown bread and a banana. I was traveling light, okay? And after four hours on the train, I was actually traveling hungry. So anyway, I asked my friend, I said, will you please, when you, here's my money, when you buy my ticket, will you make sure that it's gonna stop at the, the West train station in um, Warsaw? And he said, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know if he asked. I don't know what happened. Something was lost in the translation because we get into Warsaw. By the way, they had outsold the train, so I had to stand all four hours with my big heavy backpack. We get into Warsaw, we get into the central station that is underground, and everyone on the train gets off. And of course, I'm standing by the doors because I never did get a seat. And they're looking at me kind of funny. And then, once everybody gets off, some people get back on. And then the doors close. And I'm like, that's okay. The very next station, I'm getting off. And I'm going to walk across the parking lot. I know how to do that. And I know what a bus looks like. And I know my bus number. And I know where I can get my little loaf of bread and my banana. And I'm good. I'm handling this trip mighty fine. And Jesus is with me. And, and I'm trusting him. Guess what? The doors close. The train starts moving. I'm standing by the door. I'm looking out the window. And do you know what I saw through the window? The West train station. And the train didn't stop. Oh, no. The train didn't stop. I thought, okay, that's okay. As soon as this train stops again, I'm going to get off. And I'm going to haul my backpack. 
and I'm going to walk back to the right train stop so that I can get on the bus, right? And then I understood in Polish over the loudspeakers that the next stop was... 24 hours. Krakow. Oh, no. In the very south of Poland, a very fabulous city. Krakow. One of the only cities that still has a wall all the way around it. Super cool. cool. That, that's a good three, over three hour ride on the train. Oh, sure. And guess what? Sorry. I had enough money for a little loaf of bread, one banana, and one very cheap bus ticket. That's it. Oh, no. I was on a train, and I did not have a ticket. Not only did I have not have a ticket, but I didn't have money for a ticket, and I didn't even know how I was going to get back. And so I'm imagining all kinds of things. Because once you're on the train, they, they don't see your ticket when you get on the train. They come around for it later. Yep. You might have been on the, the train 30 minutes, maybe an hour. And then the conductor comes around, and he wants to see your, tra- your ticket. Mm-hmm. So I'm praying. This verse... This verse that says, he shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. I said, I said, I said, God, I need your feathers to cover me. I need your wings to cover me. I need you to make me invisible. Yeah. So when the conductor comes, he won't see me. Yep. Of course, I'm still standing by the door. So anyway, the, the conductor comes. All right, y'all. He's an old, grumpy man. (laughs) And he wanted my ticket. And I started to cry. I did. I had a whole bunch of big, big emotions. And my (laughs) body was trying to help me cope. And so these big old tears started just... And you know what he told me? I can't remember exactly how to say it anymore, but I understood it. He said, ah, quit your crying. That's what he said, but in Polish. And he took my passport... So I was kind of timid and very upset, and there goes my passport. There goes my identification. And I'm standing there, and I'm like, okay, God, I asked you to cover me with your feathers, but he saw me. You've got to help me, you know? And so then this man came to me, this very tall man with very blue eyes and very thick eyelashes, and he said... What I was going to say, perfect English, he said in British English to me, why are you traveling without money? And then I told him. And he goes, oh, well, that makes sense. Because see, that, Melvin, hang on, I'm going to give you a feather early. Okay, listen up. Only touch it, don't put it in your mouth. But there's a feather for you, a feather early. You, you, you lucked out right there. Okay. So he had been going all through the train trying to find somebody to translate why this little red, red-headed girl over there that was crying didn't have a ticket. And he found this British man. And so the British man comes to say, why are you, what's going on? And so then he goes back. And then he comes back to me and he says, um, I have talked with, or the conductor comes, he gets me, has me come to this little car where this British man is. And then I tell my story, he translates for me, and then I go back, and then the nice British man comes back, he comes and he gets me, and he says, I've talked to my wife, Uh, we are just moving to um, Krakow from this other place in Poland, and you can come stay in our apartment tonight. And there's an American embassy, and I'll take you there in the morning, it's all going to work out, you'll be fine. And then the conductor gave me back my passport. Do you know, I was thinking I was about to start my Polish prison ministry. <laughs> and, and I was wishing I had learned more verses in Polish. That's what I was thinking. Because, you know, there, I didn't have a phone. I couldn't call anybody. I didn't have money. And I was traveling in a foreign country. And for a moment there, I didn't even have an ID. So anyway, that man, he takes me to his house. And in Poland, do you know what their mattresses are made out of? No. Goose feathers. <laughs> And do you know what kind of blankets they have? Blankets full of goose feathers. And he made me a bed in his house. Wow. And he cooked me vegetarian food. Wow. Like, how could I be picky? But he asked me what I ate, and I said, well, I'm a vegetarian. And so that night, as I went to sleep, under the covers, I slept on feathers. I had feathers on top of me. And I said, God... Thank you. This answer to prayer did not look like I thought it was going to look. 
But you covered me up. And you took care of me. And I did get back home safely by the grace of God. So this is a promise I want you to remember forever. Commit it to memory. I, I made a little coloring sheet for you. And everyone's going to get a feather. And as soon as you get these things, you may go back to your seat. Thank you so much. Oh, wait, but we've got we to gotta pray. we got to pray. we got to pray that we remember this verse forever. So that each of you can have an experience with God's feathers too. Nova, will you pray? See, I'll pray, then you pray, okay? Loving Father, let each of these children remember that you have feathers that can cover them, that you have wings that can hide them, and that you will always protect them and be with them. Thank you, Father God, in Jesus' name. And now Nova's going to pray. Thank you, Ms. Andrea. What a beautiful thing to remember. Um, I'm not Pastor Ryan Long, but I'm going to be <laughs> for the offering today. We just wanted to give you an update uh, today on the Building Fund campaign. You know, tomorrow is the last day to give that counts toward our matching funds building campaign. So if you have been wanting to donate and haven't done it yet, it has to be done by tomorrow. We are almost at our goal. We're on track. We are excited that uh, we won't know until all of the financial reports come in. So it's not like we know tomorrow the exact total we have. But we're going to be getting, we hope, we pray, $5,000 to match the $5,000 that Paul Luck gave, plus an additional $17,000, or I'm sorry, $7,000, right? $7,000, yeah, it sounded good. A total of $17,000. And if you look in your life at Benbrook, it tells you down at the bottom how much money we have in our building fund. So add $17,000 to that. And we are praying that by the next week or two, that's what's going to be showing on that sheet. So we praise God and thank Him as we move towards raising the money to be able to have our own building to call home. We thank you. Let's have the deacons come up to take the offering and a prayer. God, what a, what a blessing it is, what a privilege it is to be able to give back to you from the from what you have given so generously and lovingly to us. God, we ask that you take the tithes and the offerings that are given today, use them to build your church, your word, to spread the message of who you are throughout our community, throughout the world. God, we love you and thank you again for the opportunity to show our trust in you as we trust you with our tithes and offerings. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's just stand up together, continue celebrating with all of heaven the two baptisms today, and just worshiping God for his goodness.
before we do um, this next song, I just want you guys to think for a moment. Today's a special day, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's a celebration, not just, and how cool that we have baptisms today. Um, this song, I have just been listening to the song over and over and over because it is just such, it is the reason that all of us are here. We, who else is worthy? No one else can save us. We can't save ourselves. And I want you to think for a moment, like, just think about your path, your journey with Jesus. Where did he have to go? Where were the places that he had to go to save your soul? Where did he go? What did he have to do to save your soul? This song says that in the second verse, it says, you healed my brokenness, showed me your glory, so I have songs of thanks that not even angels sing. Not even the angels can sing the song of redemption that we have. We know Jesus is our redeemer. And so I just want you to think about this as, as we just tell him how worthy and how holy he is. That's the point of worship. It's just to say to him, you know, it's great to have all the guitars and voices and everything, but ultimately, we have Jesus. We get to sing to Jesus. We get to tell him he is so worthy. We get to tell him personally, personally, thank you for where you had to go for me. I have a song of praise that only I can bring to you, God. I have a song of praise that only I can sing. You have a song that only you can sing. It's your life song of how you saved your soul. So as we sing this song, I just want you to focus on your journey with Jesus. And just in gratitude, just tell him how grateful and how worthy he is.
go, that we may spend eternity with you, God, the perfect anointed one who knew no sin, who became sin for us, so that we might share in the righteousness of God. Thank you, Jesus, for your great sacrifice, for the great baptisms that we have today, God. We celebrate with all of heaven, God, and we welcome your presence here. In your name I pray. conversations about this on and off now since I've known him for like I've known you for about two years now almost two years maybe not quite two years somewhere in there right and so and we've had conversations about this on and off throughout that entire time and the Holy Spirit's been working the entire time and it's been unbelievable to be a part of his journey to see him growing and maturing and developing into the man of God that God has called him to be and so he's he is just in all phases of his life he's grown so much and it's been awesome to be part of that journey with him. And I call him a brother. I call him a friend, but I also call him a brother. It's like family uh, with Kath and I. And I'm just really, really grateful. He was part of those same Bible studies with, with uh, Jaden. And we had others involved in that as well. And so I praise, I praise God for that. It was an amazing journey. But these guys were faithful. They were on there every single Sabbath afternoon. I think they each missed like one when they were forced to miss because I think Jaden was with you guys and could not get away from you guys. There were times that she snuck away from you guys, actually. And, was able to, and I think you were like dead sick or out of town or something. But we, but aside from those one times, they were there faithfully every Sabbath afternoon for months. This is months this has been going on since early December. And so I just praise God for this journey that they've, they've come on. And to be a part of it has been amazing. But yeah, but Kef is a man of God. He's a man of God. And today, he, he told me, leading up to this, he wants to embrace all of God's truth and unite with the Seventh-day Adventist movement and the member of Seventh-day Adventist Church specifically. And so this is a joyous day of celebration of that decision. Kef, I know you have a few words you want to say. First off, I think it's only appropriate that my first words are, let's go! 
Last one for me, but for, for my brothers, for my sisters, for everybody. Let's go. That's just Amen. actually my first words. Uh, <laughs> yes. Um, I just got to say a few things that were just on my heart. One of it is just like, thank you to everybody. <laughs> I know I stand up here, um, but just praise be to God and thank you for everybody because I couldn't go to the church without each and every single one of you. And what's beautiful is I can really look in the crowd. And see so many brothers, so many sisters, and just say thank you because we're helping you impossible. It is you who brought me closer to God. Amen. 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 What I love about Greenberg is that I just truly really see a little bit of Jesus Amen. in everybody. Amen. A little bit of Jesus in everybody. And that makes all the difference when somebody is on their walk and on their journey to get to grow close to Christ. And as I do my profession of faith, I just claim it all. I claim all of God's faith. I claim all of God's promises. I claim everything. Amen. The, Amen. the Ten Commandments, everything. Amen. Um, Amen. And before I just pass this mic off and everything, there is just one thing that I want to declare that has just been on my heart and that I will be a missionary. Amen. 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 I will I will go to South Korea and take any of the work I've been accepted into a school. Let's over there. go! I start my academic journey in South Korea, um, September uh, 17th, I believe. And um, <laughs> I'm just so excited, but um, I start my academic journey over there, but that's when the journey truly begins, when I start touching people's lives over there, when I can start being an example, and straight over there, and doing everything God has called me to do. So I just ask for your prayers for that journey. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Share a little for something here with us too. Hi, everybody. <laughs> okay, so I wanted to share today that, well, my mom and dad have really been um, a guidance through my journey. I came from a house, I can say, that, I mean, I didn't have an actual Bible. I would look up on my phone a Bible. I haven't been to a seventh day Baptist church. My first time here was my first time here with them. And, um, I think it's really changed me. It's made me who I am today. I don't think I would be here if I didn't have these appearance. So I really thank them. And I can't call out names on who's helped me because honestly, it's been so many people. It's been everybody here. Even the ones that I don't know, just seeing the smile on their face, seeing Jesus in them is like, it's a really good motivation for me. And also just to know that Everybody here has some part in Jesus, and Jesus is working in everybody here. So I really thank everybody for that. And amen. A week ago today, after the service, Michaela pulled Maria and I aside and said, Can I pray for you? And had the most beautiful prayer for us and for Noah and for our family. She is just growing in Jesus, and it's beautiful to watch. We're so excited for you, Michaela. Praise God. Praise God. Okay, so baptism has been a decision that I've taken me a long time to come to. I thought about it, and when I was living in Michigan, but I ended up having to leave. And I didn't really think about it again until I met Pastor Jacob. And then when I moved to Benbrook, I just knew that this was the church family that I wanted to be a part of. Because that's what the Bible says happened 
when people receive the Holy Spirit, laying out of hands in prayer, is just simply a recognition of God's personal touch in your life and the Holy Spirit just filling you from this day forward. This is something that you have now the privilege every day going forward of asking for this blessing in your life, the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And we're going to talk about that today in the sermon, but right now we're going to pray for that for each of you. Father in heaven, uh, your spirit is so present today and active and working amongst us. And this morning for Keth and Michaeli and for Jaden, Father, we pray for the pouring out of your Holy Spirit upon each one of them today in power. And when your Holy Spirit comes into our life, he brings everything else with him. The gifts of the Holy Spirit to be used in ministry, the fruit of the Spirit, so that we might reflect your character and your goodness and your kindness better and better. Uh, Father, he brings even the person of Jesus Christ into our minds, into our hearts, uh, because there's no way we can live a life that reflects you without that. And so, Father, we pray these blessings for each one of these young people. What a, what a fabulous testimony this morning. These young people committing their lives Amen. to you Amen. and uh, doing that going forward. We thank you for each of their testimonies that have sounded out this morning. And we pray that day by day they will just remember that they have that privilege every morning to invite your spirit back into their hearts uh, for, for that day going forward. We pray all of these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Guys, we have a few things for you all really quick, and then we want to go. I just want to say something really, really super quick. Did you guys catch what Jaden said at the end of there, at her testimony? That she would, this is the church family she wanted to be a part of. Yeah. I want each of you to think about how good that should make you feel. Yeah. To be such a welcoming, loving church that young people, Jaden, how old are you? 19. 19 year old people, young people are saying, that's the church family that I want to be a part of. That is the Ben Brook Seventh day Adventist church. Praise God. You should feel amazing that God is using you in such a beautiful way. Guys, I know that things like this don't happen without the Holy Spirit convicting people's hearts that, yes, that's a step that I need to take, whether it's I really want to understand God's word better and make a commitment to studying his word, or maybe God is speaking to your heart during that baptism as you watched, and he's saying that should be me in there today, uh, doing that right now. If there is anyone here like that today, would you just raise your hands and we would like to have a special word of prayer for you as well. Anybody here? I know that God is speaking to people's Amen. hearts right now. Praise God. Praise God. Jay, raise a hand for Whitney here. Praise God. Was he forcing you to do that? No, he wasn't. Okay. Praise God. Praise God. She did half when you gave her the boost there. Right? Amen. Anybody else? Anybody else? God is so good. If, if there's a little timidity, that's okay. Come and find us afterwards. We'll be happy to pray for you. Let me pray for you right now, Whitney. Father in heaven, I lift up to you, Whitney. I thank you for her love for you, her deep love for you, the prayer warrior that she is. And I know that you have been just guiding her on this journey of walking uh, more deeply into your word. And uh, we thank you for her and for Dominic and for the blessing that they, them and their family are to our church, for Andrew and for Jay. And Father, we ask for your blessings for this family going forward. And on Whitney, as she is saying, yes, I want to do this too. I'm, 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 this is my church family and I want to join. So Father, we, we thank you for that. We praise you. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, as we transition into the sermon time, watch a short video here at Focused on the Cross and the Resurrection.
one thing that in all the excitement right. we forgot to do was to vote these three young people in. They didn't go to Brook Seventh Day Adventist Church. So for Jaden, McKaylee, and Ken, I would be happy to entertain a motion. Yes, yes. seconds all over the place. All in favor, say welcome to the family. Welcome to the family. Amen. You guys have a family. You know that already, don't you? Yes. Um, that's kind of what yes. I heard in some of these we testimonies today. Yes. You are a part of the family of God here in Denver, yes. worldwide. You are. This is. You are part of the body of Christ here. You Amen. are appreciated and valued. Thank God so much for each of you. Um, this morning, we have a full service, so I'm thinking about ways that I can maybe speed up a little bit. There, there is no way that we want to in any way skip on the time of celebrating these, uh, these people coming to their decisions, and we just want to just spotlight that. Amen. You're going to see some things on the screen. If you want to ask me about this story later, feel free to do it, but I'm going to skip it, okay? So I've got some pictures up here, but I do want to take just a moment as we're getting started to say two weeks from today, Park Church Day, okay? God, God has opened up some beautiful opportunities for us to go out into the community and uh, to begin just kind of inviting people. That, that's the goal, right? Isn't that the goal of, of what Jesus wants, that other people would come to know him more? God has opened up a door for us to do that for the student body and for the parents here at this school. Amen. Um, um, so two weeks from today, the school is, has invited us to be a part of this math carnival. I am so excited about that. Uh, you know, God, he's the God of science. He's the God of math. He's the God of all of these things, isn't he? So we get to be here. Uh, Alexa is going to design uh, some, where are you? Oh, there she is. She's going to design our games for these kids, the math games. We, I, I haven't asked Debbie yet, but I'm thinking Debbie might do, you know, work with prizes. <laughs> Um, and then uh, we're going to have a flyer. The school said you can promote your church at our event. You can have a flyer at your table. And so we're going to have a flyer with upcoming events. We're going to have something specifically promoting worship night, which will be two weeks away at that time. I am just so excited. So that's one thing. But we're going to be doing park church the same day as well. And so our thought was that well, while we're at the park, why not go hand out flyers to all of them as well? And then that afternoon, also, we're going to go out and just this great controversy project, this beautiful book about the times we're living in today. We have 1,700 copies of the great controversy and a book called Thrive, little door hanger bags, beautiful book from, that takes things from the crucifixion of Jesus and the fall of Jerusalem all the way through the second coming of Jesus. Such a powerful book. We're going to put flyers in those bags, too, and we're going to go door to door. So I'm just encouraging you right now on April the 13th, wear your sunscreen, develop a little bit of outdoor stamina between now and then, your ability to be outdoors. We're going to kind of condense the services a little bit, but we're going to have uh, our Bible study time uh, at 1130. We're going to have lunch at 1215, so 45 minutes instead of an hour for Bible study. And then uh, lunch from 12.15 to 1, an abbreviated church service, about 30 minutes, just focused on outreach. And then from 1.30 on, we're going to be going through the park and through neighborhoods and just inviting people to everything that's coming up here in Midbrook. I'm so excited, and I hope you are too. I hope you'll be plan to be here that day and enjoy that with us. I'm not here, but at the park, right? <laughs> um, we'll be at the park that day. We'll have more information coming up, okay? Are you excited about that? Yeah. God is so good. He's literally just opening doors of opportunity in front of us, including the school saying, yeah, you can have BBS here this summer. And potentially another really exciting opportunity that we won't share much about until we know it for sure, yes, on. But uh, some really, really neat things. So having said that, um, aren't you glad? Aren't you praising God today that Jesus is alive? Amen. That he is risen. I'm going to skip ahead in some of my notes here. But three weeks ago, we looked at the crucifixion of Christ. And the difference and the meaning that that has for us. 
uh, we looked at the fact that Jesus was determined to go to the cross on our behalf. Um, he set his face to go to Jerusalem. He set his face to go to the cross, the Bible says, or he was determined to do that. Uh, the Bible also says that a part of the meaning of the crucifixion of Christ is that he died as us. He died as Brian and Jimmy and uh, Deborah, every single one of us. He died as us um, so that we could die to sin as well. That's the power of the cross, that we might die to sin, right? Amen. And, and Jesus did that on our behalf so that we could unite with him in his death, death to self, death to sin. He offered us forgiveness on the cross. What a beautiful thing. Amen. Because every single one of us needs it, don't we? Amen. We are all sinners, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We looked at that beautiful aspect of, of what Jesus did for us on the cross. He died for our sins so we could be forgiven. And one of the last verses we looked at talked about how Jesus was saying to his disciples about going to Jerusalem and dying there. Um, that he was determining today and tomorrow and the next day that he would go to Jerusalem because a prophet shouldn't die outside of Jerusalem. Jesus literally, as the cross was approaching, he was choosing every day. Yes, I'm going to the cross. I'm going to the cross for this. And praise God for that. Today we're going to focus on the resurrection of Jesus and the meaning of that for us in our lives, okay? So we're going to skip through this really interesting neat story here, but we're skipping through that, okay? The setting of the resurrection. We're going to get to these verses in just a moment, but it was a glorious event, right? I mean, just spectacular. The testimony of the soldiers that went to Jerusalem when Jesus died, graves were split open, and when he was resurrected, there were people who were raised again in that moment. Um, several people were raised with him. They went into Jerusalem testifying about him. And uh, it seems that they probably, Jesus took a few people ahead of time to heaven with him, right? And so the 40 days, the aftermath between the resurrection and Jesus' ascension to heaven, I mean, he's appearing to the disciples. What's interesting to me is that the resurrection was only witnessed by a very few people. Do you realize that? It was just a few people. And none of them were his followers. Isn't that interesting? You know, he could have sent out invites. He, he knew what was going to happen ahead of time. He prophesied about his death. He prophesied about the, how long in the grave, you know, three days and three nights. So um, he knew ahead of time about all of this. He could have sent out invites, you know. What? My resurrection. When? Sunday, you know. Uh, be there. He did not do that, did he? He could have, but he didn't. And in addition to this, the story of the resurrection of Jesus is only given in very minimal detail in the scripture. Do you realize that? The story is given three verses in all four of the Gospels. I mean, look at Mark, look at Luke, look at John. Guess what you'll find? You'll find the crucifixion. You'll find maybe something about Sabbath. And you'll, you'll find then after the crucifixion, after the resurrection. When they came to the tomb, they found it empty. Yeah. But literally, three verses in all of the Gospels literally document the story. Here they are. Uh, Matthew 28, verses 2 through 4. And behold, a severe earthquake had occurred, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled away the stone and sat upon it. And his appearance was like lightning and his clothing as white as snow. The guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men. Such a huge event. Amazing, beautiful, but very little written about the actual event of the resurrection of Jesus. There was lots written about the crucifixion, lots about the aftermath of the resurrection of Jesus, but just a little bit about Jesus' resurrection and the events right there. Is it possible that, at least in part, the reason might be 
that Jesus didn't want us to get so focused on the actual event of his resurrection that we might miss the vastness of the meaning of the resurrection of Jesus for each one of us. Is it possible that maybe Jesus didn't want us to worship the event, but he wanted yes. us to worship the risen Christ himself, that, that, that he wanted us to celebrate the reality of what he's living right now and where he is yeah. right now. It can be so possible for us to look backwards only to the tomb and not realize the meaning for us today. Today we're going to look at, at the meaning of the resurrection for us today. Uh, those three verses, we're going to look at the meaning of the resurrection. John 16, verse 7, we're going to start here. Jesus says, but I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go away, I will send him to you. Who's the helper? The Holy Spirit, absolutely. In fact, I hope you recognize some of the themes of the day with baptism and what we've been talking about with what we're celebrating here today, right? Um, the Helper. I, I want to read a quote to you from a beautiful book called The Desire of Ages about the life of Jesus. Let me share with you just a little bit. It's page 669. It says, Before this, the Spirit had been in the world from the very beginning of the work of redemption. He had been moving upon men's hearts. But while Christ was on the earth, the disciples had desired no other helper. Not until they were deprived of his presence would they feel their need of the Spirit, and then he would come. The Holy Spirit is Christ's representative, but divested of the personality of humanity and independent thereof. Covered with humanity, Christ could not be in every place personally. Therefore, it was for their interest that he should go to the Father and send the Spirit to be his successor on earth. No one could then have any advantage because of his location or his personal contact with Christ. By the Spirit, the Savior would be accessible to all. In this sense, he would be nearer to them than if he had not ascended on high. Isn't that a blessing? The work that the Holy Spirit has come to do to, to allow the person of Jesus Christ to be so close to us, filling us, living inside of us, that he's closer than if he were face to face and we were giving him a big hug. Is, is that, it's a miracle. I, sometimes we don't feel that way, but that is the reality if we're embracing the gifts that Jesus has given us in the Holy Spirit. It's the beautiful reality. Jesus said it this way in John 14, 16 through 20. I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper that he may be with you forever. That is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it does not see him or know him. But you know him because he abides with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. After a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I, will, I live, you will live also. In that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. Amen. What a beautiful promise. The promise of Jesus literally indwelling us through the presence of the Holy Spirit. Praise God for that. The first beautiful truth of the reality of the meaning of the resurrection is this idea that it, it was it, it provided for the giving of the Holy Spirit, which makes it possible for Jesus to be alive in each and every one of us. Praise God for that. You know, there, there are a number of other things. We're going to uh, just kind of keep moving forward. We're going to take a pause to kind of process some of this. But Romans chapter 6, verses 5 through 7 talking about the meaning of baptism, actually. You can find that in verses 2 through 4, verses 5 through 7. Continuing forward says, For if we have become united with him in the likeness of his death, 
certainly we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old self was crucified with him in order that our body of sin might be done away with, so that we would no longer be slaves to sin. For he who has died is freed from sin. Amen for that too, right? So the, the beautiful thought here is that Jesus died to offer us forgiveness, uh, to offer us freedom from guilt. Uh, he died to, to give us grace and to give us mercy. All of these beautiful blessings. But the reality is Jesus didn't want us to stop that. I think sometimes we, we may stop short of the fullness of the blessings that God wants for us. You see, he does want us to receive his grace and his mercy and the forgiveness and the freedom from guilt. But guess what else he wants for us? He wants to raise us up into new life, set us free from the things that bind us and keep us held and, and, uh, and, and always just kind of coming back to this defeated attitude and mentality. He wants to set us free. Amen. That's the reality here. You know, years ago when I was in high school, I remember um, feeling like I needed a pair of new boots. And I had a job, but it was, didn't really pay very much at the time. And I, I had a few criteria. One is they had to be affordable, fairly, you know, inexpensive. It couldn't be Doc Martens or something like that. That's, I don't know. Is, is that still a thing? Doc Martens? I don't know. That was a long time ago in the 90s. So <laughs> dating myself here. Um, but they, they had to be affordable. They had to be comfortable. I wanted them to be brown. And, you know, just generally some of those things. I wanted them to be comfortable. So I went to a shoe store. And I, I found some there. It was a pair of Skecher boots. And they looked um, something like this here. Victory over yes. So... But the Skechers boots looked something like this, and and um, and they were really comfortable. They they fit my budget. I bought them. Sometimes you walk away having buyer's remorse. You know, oh man, did I really buy that? I had none of that that day. Everything was good until about two months later, when one of the boots, the sole, started coming un done from the shoe it started pulling loose a little bit and I'm like this shouldn't be happening you know that stitching was coming loose and I'm like oh boy you know and it wasn't long before the other shoe started the same thing and then eventually I was like I can actually stick a pencil inside my boot from the outside this is not good and I had let things go past like the 90 days and I didn't know if they had a 90 day policy but sometimes people do you know and so I, I was like, oh, okay, I'm going to take a chance here. I'm going to take it back in the bag, take the receipt with me. And rarely did I save receipts, but I happened to this time. So I went into the store, was talking to the sales clerk there, and, and I was sharing my story. And he said, you know, um, let me go check on something for you. And I'm like, oh, great. I'm like, okay, okay. And so he goes to the back and... And I'm like, oh, great. He's going to come back, and he's going to have some reason why I cannot get a new pair of boots and get these replaced. And I'm uh, thinking of all the reasons that he could possibly use. Oh, well, you know, it's just a little past that time period that we allow people to come back. And so all these things are running through my head, and he comes back, and um, he says, you know, I've got some good news for you and some bad news. And I said... Okay, well, I guess lay them both on me. And he's like, okay, let me tell you the good news first. He said, uh, the, the good news is that um, it looks like this is a manufacturing issue. Um, we're going to replace them today. And I was like, oh, good, you know. And he's like, so I guess the question would be, do you want the same boot? Do you want something different? And I was like, well, I really like these. I'm just hoping for a better outcome this time. And he's like, okay. And he said, well, the bad news is, um, since you bought them, they've actually gone on sale for $15 off what you bought them for. And so today, um, we can't give you the money back. You'll have to take a store credit. He's like, is that okay? What do you think I said? <laughs> no, sorry. Give me cash or nothing. No, I didn't say that. I was like, oh, you know, I think that'll work for me, you know? <laughs> And so I walked out of there today, that day with a new pair of boots, a hat, and a pair of socks. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, this is awesome. 
But I wonder sometimes if we might have that, uh, I guess, that hypothetical Ryan experience. Like, no, sorry, that's not going to work for me. I only want this, but not that. And Jesus offers us so much in the death and resurrection experience of Jesus, doesn't he? Amen. Not only forgiveness and grace and mercy, but he also says, I want you to live a new life. I want to set you free from the things that bind you. Do you want it? Because guess what? Here, here's the secret. It comes as a package deal. Yeah. We, we can't separate them from each other and say, yeah, I want this, but I don't want that. Yeah. Oh, well, when we baptize people, we don't put them under the water and leave them there, do we? And hold them under? <laughs> well, we, don't say, we don't do that, do we? We bring them back up. Because the beautiful symbol of baptism is dying and being raised into new life. Set free from sin. Victory in our lives. That's what Jesus wants for us. Praise God for that. I'm so thankful that he has so much to offer us. I, I would encourage you not to believe the lies the devil tells us. That maybe, yeah, I just want that, but not that. I'm not sure that I really want new life yet because I, I don't know that maybe that's not going to be successful for me or uh, maybe we even find it hard sometimes for us to just embrace God's forgiveness because it seems too good. Um, we're like, well, you know, everything I've had in life so far, I've had to work for it. I don't feel like I've earned this. You know, I'm real. I, you know, I really don't have a great past to show for much of anything. Those are the lies of the devil because that is not God's plan for you to somehow come to a point where you're good enough to earn it. You cannot have real change in your life that's lasting unless Jesus is a part of it, unless he is at the center of it. But the, the beautiful message is that Jesus will send his Holy Spirit to live inside of you, Amen. to live inside of me. And the risen Christ will gladly dwell in your minds and in your hearts Amen. through faith. And he will bring newness of life. And he will bring victory over sin if you, if you are just willing to put your faith in him and to trust him. Hebrews 7.25 tells us a little more about some of the beautiful realities of the risen Christ for us. Hebrews 7.25 says, Therefore, he is able also to save forever those who draw near to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. You see, the beautiful reality is that Jesus also, in addition to offering all of this, all of these beautiful things we've talked about already, he realizes that we are not perfect at that moment of baptism. We are not perfect at that moment. And even as he sets us free from sin, guess what? We still need a Savior because, because we are, are walking this, this road of, of on this side of heaven. You know, we are not perfect at this time. And we need, every day, we need an intercessor, don't we? We need somebody in heaven who's like, I'm your advocate. I am on your side. I am for you. And when you come to me and you ask for forgiveness again for things that you've done and, and mistakes that you've made, I'm here for you. I got you. You are mine. He is our intercessor. First John 1, verse 9 and uh, going forward says it this way. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Let's not go there, all right? My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he himself is the propitiation for our sins. And not for ours only, but also for those of the whole world. Amen. What a beautiful truth that is there. But the third reality here is that we have the intercessory ministry of Jesus taking place right now in heaven on our behalf. He is our, our intercessor. He's our advocate. He is for you. He is not against you. It is not a scary thing to come to him when we mess up and need, need to get back on track. 
It's what he invites us to do. It's what he wants for us. We should not let shame or discouragement keep us away from him. We need to come to him with our whole hearts. Amen. Hebrews uh, 4, verses 14 through 16. One more thing we're going to look at today. It says this. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For... For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weakness, but one who has been tempted in all things as we are, yet without sin. Therefore, let us draw near with confidence to the throne of grace so that we might, may receive mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Um, you know, it's, it's interesting. Some of us may say, you know, all of that is fine and good, but I'm not really sure that he understands what I'm going through. Do you think Jesus understands? Yes. The passage we just read. He does, doesn't he? He understands what we're going through. The Bible says he has been tempted in all things like we are, except he didn't sin. You see, the only aspects of our, our sin experience that... He did not experience himself as falling into sin, getting stuck in sinful habits and, and uh, uh, things like that, uh, experiencing the natural results of sin. Of course, you could argue, though, that when he went to the cross, in some aspect, he understood all of those because he was carrying our sins. He was carrying our guilt. He experienced what it felt like to feel that way. To fill the enormity of sin, sins of the whole world weighing him down. And he carried all of that. So yes, we do have a Savior that understands, don't we? And aren't we glad that he didn't walk the road of falling into sin? Because that is the very reason that we are able to call him Savior. Because he was our spotless lamb that went to the cross and was sacrificed there on our behalf. Praise God for that. The sin-bearing, guilt-bearing, crucified Savior now is our victorious, risen Christ. Yes. He is your high priest. He's just waiting for us to call on him anytime. And he's there. One more passage, 1 Thessalonians 4, verses 13 through 17, it says... But we do not want you to be uninformed, brethren, about those who are asleep, so that you will not grieve as to the rest who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain will be caught up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we shall always be with the Lord. What a beautiful promise we have there. You see, the, the last thing we're going to look at here, and, and, and the beautiful reality of the fact that Jesus is risen, is that he is coming again. Amen. He is coming again. We have this beautiful hope for our loved ones who have fallen asleep in Jesus. We're going to see them again. We're going to see them again on that day in the resurrection when he calls them forth from the grave. That is all because Jesus is victorious and, and he is going to be uh, our, our loving Savior, our victorious Savior all throughout eternity. And praise God for that. You know, I remember a time, just close with this story here. Um, I, was, I had been pastoring in the uh, Conway, Clinton, Searcy, Arkansas area for a little while. My first place I pastored right out of college, three churches, and there was a point in time in my little Honda CRX, uh, you guys remember those little tiny cars, two-door hatchback, um, 
Fun to drive, though, you know. Um, I had a ticket in each county that I passed through. <laughs> and it's like, you know, deferred adjudication, best thing ever, you know. But there was one ticket I got where I was like, you know what, I'm going to fight this one. Because, you know, I, I, so, short story, my tail light was, I thought it was out. I took it to a shop, they looked at it, and they said, oh no, the bulb's just out. They replaced it, but it was actually a short. <laughs> I didn't realize that. And so, yes, my tail light was not working that night, but in my own mind, I was like, I'm innocent, you know, I'm going to go to court and fight this. I didn't know what I was doing. I had never been to court before, and I got there that day, and it was really intimidating. It looked like this here. Um, you know, small little court courthouse in Faulkner County, Arkansas. And um, funny story, I actually missed my court date the first time. I was like 40 miles away, and I was like, oh, this is my court date right now. So I called, they rescheduled me, I was grateful. But I showed up the day that they rescheduled me the second time. And has anyone ever gone through that experience before? I know a few people, okay, okay. So they start by taking roll call, and it takes a while. They're trying to figure out who all is there that is supposed to have reported that day. And I don't, I don't know if this is common like everywhere, but it was, it was like kind of comical in a way because as they're calling the roll call, they're calling each name, Ryan Long, are you here today, Mr. Long? You know, and I'm like, yeah. But they had some names, like at one point the judge said, uh, Michael Jackson. Is there a Michael Jackson here today? And like, people are like snickering, and he's just like so straight faced. This must have happened to him all the time. He got a little further down, he's like, Britney Spears. Is Britney Spears here? <laughs> Who actually has a license plate that says that? Or maybe they didn't have an ID, so they told them the name. I'm like, I, I don't know what's going on here, but it was it was funny to a lot of people there. But it was it was really unsettling. I was sitting on the aisle about halfway back, halfway back in the courtroom, and I saw the officer that had stopped me. And I was thinking, maybe he just won't show up. Maybe I'll get off here. Um, but as they called the roll call, you had to go before the judge and enter your plea. Guilty or not guilty? And so this is me. This is how clueless I am. I'm like, I go before the judge, and he's like, guilty or not guilty? And I'm like, actually, judge, I'm wondering if you could help me decide on this here. <laughs> I'm like, you know, and he's like, no. He cuts me off before I get to an explanation. He's like, no, you just have to say guilty or not guilty. And I'm like, okay, I guess not guilty. So I go back and sit down, and this officer is eyeing me the whole time. And I'm like, oh, no. He remembers me. He's got my number. My tail light literally was out. I don't know if I can explain this here. And he's, he goes up and he starts talking to somebody else. And still looking back at me. I'm like, am I imagining this? I'm like turning around, looking to see if anyone else looks uneasy. No, he's really looking at me. And, and, and at one point he starts walking to the back of the courtroom, down the center aisle, still looking at me. This must be a dream. It's like the floor, can it open up here? Can I fall through and uh, just change my mind about wanting to come to court? Can I pay the fine, please? And uh, he stops right in front of me and says, Mr. Long, would you step to the back of the courtroom with me? And I'm like, yes, officer, absolutely. You know, trying to be very, you know, uh, respectful. And, and so we go to the back of the courtroom and he goes, now, Mr. Long, I don't know if you noticed me kind of looking in your direction or not. And I'm like, I may have noticed, yeah, I, <laughs> I may have. Uh, but um, he says, um, well, well, here's the thing. He's like, the reason I kept looking at you is because I see the ticket that I wrote. And, um, and I know you're here today and it's your name and all of this other stuff. And he goes, but I don't remember this at all. And he goes, so here's what I'm going to suggest. I'm going to suggest that we go before the judge. I tell you, I don't remember. I tell him, I don't remember this. And would you just dismiss this? He says, how does that sound? What do you think I said? I said, no, I'd rather fight this. Let's go. Let's go. No, I did it, right? I would be out of my mind and crazy to do that. I said, it sounds all right to me. <laughs> Not I don't jump over joy. And that's exactly what happened. We walked up before the judge and this officer advocated for me. 
And he's like, uh, Mr. Long, I don't remember what happened here, um, you know, and so I would just suggest that you dismiss his ticket. He goes, okay, he sent this over to someone else to sign it, and I was, I was gone, and I was, I was so happy, so grateful. I mean, and you know, walking away in the moment, I was just like, all these thoughts were swirling, but as I drove away, I was like, ah, isn't this what Jesus did for us? Amen. Isn't this what he does? And still sometimes we're like, no, I think I'm pretty good. You know, I think I can do this. Let's fight. Let's, let's, let me defend myself and tell you how good I am. No, God says, no. Just let me forget all of this stuff that happened. Amen. Isn't that okay? If, Amen. if you just accept my forgiveness and I just wipe your slate clean. And then if I also give you the blessing of giving you new life, resurrected life, victory over sin, don't you just want that? And this morning, I'm, I'm just putting the question to you. Is that what you want this morning? Do you want the new resurrected life of Jesus? How many of you want to embrace that either for the first time or all over again in your life today? Amen. Praise God. If some of you, if this is like maybe your first time embracing it, or you really want to rededicate your life, after the service, our prayer team is going to be up front here. And they're here to hear you. They're here to pray for you, to pray with you, and to encourage you today. And prayer team, you guys know who you are. So at the end of the song, they're going to come forward and be here to minister to you today as we close, okay? Thank you. Jesus, that he is risen. He is the risen Christ. Amen. amen, amen. Can we just stand together one last time and continue celebrating what he has done for us in his goodness?
in prayer. 